What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. What's up, y'all? What's up? So, y'all already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Monday. And, girl, listen, I'm going to just say this. Some of y'all hoes really be trying to come for me and all of that other nonsense. But let me just tell you this. I am not here for the foolishness. I'm not here for the nonsense. And I'm going to be addressing this today because some of y'all, and I don't mean all of y'all, but y'all know who y'all are. Some of y'all really need to chill the F out because let me tell you something. Your opinions and decisions and likes and dislikes, sometimes it really don't matter to me especially for those of y'all that are really irrelevant to me some of y'all bullshit that y'all come at me with really does not matter to me or I'm it does matter to a certain extent because I'm going to address it but at the end of the day it's like girl please you just really wasted your time sending me any of this email or this sentence or this bullshit because at the end of the day girl your shit goes in the trash okay so what's up y'all welcome back to my channel it is real talk Wednesday and it's your girl april i hope y'all all are having like a really great day whenever you watching this divas and devos okay all of those who have been supporting my channel from day one okay when i say day one i mean day one i want to th say thank you to all of those who have been by my side from day one and even those who haven't and still ride or die and supporting i want to say thank you to everybody you know what i mean like sometimes we got to put that out there in the atmosphere and let everybody know like you are very grateful and appreciative to what they have done for you what they have said to you what they have rated you on either way you know what i'm saying i'm very grateful even to the haters and those who don't like me i'm still appreciative because girl you watched the shit you watched it and that was a view so you know with that being said i thank you all very very much okay yes girl so i hope y'all had like a really great weekend it is um labor day today and y'all already know what that being said school is about to be returned in the east coast y'all know i'm from nyc so I know y'all about to go back to school this week so i hope y'all all have like a really great week if your kids are going back to school this week let them know that a said i hope you have a really great week in the beginning of the school semester and just be mindful demure and definitely cutesy okay boo but with that being said yes it is labor day and i'm here i really honestly got off on a late start because it is actually 1 20 in the afternoon and girl let me tell y'all i normally be way done by now like when i say way done like i don't have i'm not re recording by now i'm editing by now but because it was no school i did get off to a late start i woke up at 903 this morning and i was like oh my god like it's late it's late like nine o'clock to me it's kind of late to be in the bed like i'm not judging anybody who you know what i'm saying stay in the bed later than that because that's your preference but for me it's really really late like i like to be up the time that i wake up which is 6 15 6 o'clock on the daily monday through friday on the weekends i probably get up like about eight o'clock 7 30 that's really good for me like i don't really like to sleep in too late late sleeping in to me is like nine o'clock like some people may feel like girl you sh you reaching but for me i like to be up really early i like to get my day started i like to do what i need to do and then be able to just unwind during like the early evening or late afternoon that's just me you know what i'm saying and plus on top of that i do bring my grandson and my granddaughter to school and daycare and by the time i'm finished dropping everybody off them two children i'm back home by like let's say about 8 15 and so that's when i start my day i come back upstairs i may make me something to eat depending on what day of the week it is like for mondays i won't eat until after i've done you know recording my um real talk and while the footage is being transferred over to my computer for my camera that's when i'll go downstairs and make me some breakfast probably takes about 15 20 minutes for everything to transfer over so that's when i'll go make my breakfast but by 8 30 9 o'clock i'm always sitting at my desk like it's a real job because it is and i'm working until 2 45 is when i go pick up my grandson from school and then i'll pick up my granddaughter i'll come back you know what i'm saying and then i'll get a couple more hours in and work but because it's labor day i really didn't have the opportunity to wake up at 6 30 in the morning 6 15 so yeah i slept until 903 and i was really not too pleased about that but it is what it is you know what I mean? sometimes we have to splurge on our sleeping i guess and plus girl let me tell y'all i was up to like two in the morning since thursday or wednesday 
yeah, like since Wednesday, just like watching television, I wasn't really able to sleep due to the fact that I ran out of my prescription um, to help me sleep. I haven't really been getting a lot of good sleep in the past like couple of weeks now. But because I haven't really been getting a lot of good sleep, I have been watching, um, you know, a lot of television. And normally I don't really watch a lot of TV. But girl, I felt like I needed to watch some new shit. So I went back to watching um, Power because I've watched every single episode of Power. But I never got into Ghost or The Force or Raising Canaan. Like I watched Raising Canaan for the first season and just deaded it for like for two years. So I went back to watching that and girl, it made me really miss being at home like I really miss New York City I really miss my hometown Queens so I started really missing a lot of things shout out to Raising Canaan I love that show I think like out of all of the um power books in that series the spin-offs I think like there's power there's the force there's um ghosts and then there's Raising Canaan I really feel like for me Raising Canaan is the best out of all of them and that's probably because I could really relate to the entire episodes you know what I'm saying 1991 was my time I was 16 and 17 years old and so that was you know what I mean like that was the time that I was running the streets and doing shit that I had no business doing so I could really relate to a lot of things that was going on there so I've been really like in in that entire series and I just finished it and now it's like okay I'm gonna just go watch BMF and I don't know I really just can't get into BMF it's probably because I'm not from Detroit nothing against Detroit because you guys are cool too if y'all are watching but I love Raising Canaan and to me I feel like those are the best of the power spinoffs let me know if you guys watch that in the comments and which one do you think is the best of the spinoffs from power this but another show that I watched yesterday because I kept seeing it pop up on my um for you page on my facebook page on my youtube was the netflix movie the deliverance um with glenn close and i think her name what is her name andrea i think it's pronounced andre day girl and monique okay girl if y'all have not seen the deliverance you definitely may want to watch it i don't know a lot of spiritual people may not want to watch it and first of all let me just tell y'all now mind you i just kept seeing it pop up i really didn't know why it was popping up or what it entailed the actual movie but as i was watching it i was like oh this is like some demonic shit and i remember telling you guys like a few weeks back i don't really care for demonic movies at all i'm more or less like an action pack person like i love movies like um let's see rambo like i'm just going back like to the old days rambo the um um what is it called um oh my god i was about to say the incredibles but that's like a disney movie and i've never disney pixar movie and i've never watched that but um you know what is that movie called with <sighs> sylvester stallone patrick um arnold arnold schwarzenegger either way i love a good action pack movie like i like to see fighting scenes and shoot them up i don't really care for any type of horror films and demonic especially when it comes to demonic i'm really not into demonic because i'm one of those type of people like that shit i feel like it can just like transfer into your home and so it was a good movie let me let me just say that it was a good movie but the one thing that i wasn't really keen on was the actual verbiage the verbiage from the daughter to the mother was very disrespectful like i don't know about y'all but like i have an issue and issues going on with my mom right now but there is no way on god's green earth would i ever call my mother a bitch like i've seen this portrayed a lot in the movie you know she called her mother a bitch and then the mother called her a bitch and then the daughter was like yeah um back in her time basically big back in the day basically as she was said it she would have dragged the bitch for acting or saying less to her like why are you threatening your mother like that like do we not have respect for our mothers <clears throat> and i felt like it was just really really weird the way that they you know um spoke to and interacted with one another i just felt like the movie it could have been a little bit better i feel like the verbiage that was used between mother and daughter could have been less and like it really wasn't needed for the movie it really wasn't needed for the plot of the movie like a lot of families don't do that and i just don't like to see the way that black family is betrayed in this particular movie now the demonic issues in the movie was okay um but i felt myself at the very 
very end, if you watch this movie, at the very end, when Andrea Day was in the basement, she was trying to basically get the demon out of her son. I did start praying, and I did start talking to God because of all the demonic actions in the movies. It just made me feel like, okay, right now is the time where I have to praise God and I have to talk to God because even though this is a movie, I don't want any type of demonic spirits in my home. And that's a lot of the reasons why I don't like to watch a lot of the demonic movies because you just really don't know what can transfer onto you or your spirit or into your homes. So I was kind of disappointed with the movie, movie the, the, the verbiage and just it just really wasn't a movie that I thought it was going to be when it said the deliverance. I should have read the info prior to watching because had I read it, girl, I wouldn't even have watched it. There's certain things that I don't like to watch in my home and that demonic shit is one of them. Like I don't really like to watch anything demonic in my home and that's just me. I don't really like to watch anything demonic at all because I just feel like I, for one, as a person, is going to be kind of like scared at night and also I just really really don't want anything transferring over to me and some people may feel like I'm like a little bit too I'm like I'm reaching but that's just me as a person like I don't like that type of movie so if you want to watch it if you're into that then by all means go ahead but I know y'all probably like girl you like to watch the gang banging I will watch that because I know that shit ain't transferring over here, but just spiritual stuff, I really try to stay away from when it comes to spiritual type of movies because you just really don't know. Now, other than that, you know, today I got on my half wig, to, excuse me, half wig. Well, it is a half wig, it's a headband wig, so it's basically the same thing. And this one is from my first wigs. I've had it for a minute and I absolutely love it. It's kind of like the one that I showed you guys that Mumsy was wearing, except for hers was, um, well, not hers, but anyway, it's an ombre, so it's darker here and this color at the bottom. But this one suits me, kind of masks my freckles. But before we get into everything, everything, I am going to be reading three emails today. One of them is really kind of like bullshit, but I'm going to read it anyway. But I just wanted to let you guys know today's video is being sponsored by EAF Car. So y'all already know, um, listen, I I am not a mechanic. I really, I, I, I pride myself on being able to do the little bit of things that I can for my car, which is putting air in my tires, changing a tire, changing light bulbs in my car, changing headlight shields in my car, amongst some other things, changing the oil. I can do a little bit of things in my car. I can't tell you that I could do everything, but when I do feel like my tires need a little bit of air in them, my car will initially let me know. And of course, I will drive to like the nearest spot and get air. Now, because it's so hot out here in Arizona, you do need to or you will find yourself putting air in your tires a lot more and also purchasing batteries as well. And so if you ever feel like you're out and about and you're somewhere that you cannot get air in your tires or you're not somewhere close, but you do need air in your tires. Tires. This is a portable air compressor for your tires. Now, the funny thing is, and well, it's not really even funny, but I did purchase one of these like years and years ago, an air compressor for my tire. When I tell you the thing was huge, the thing was huge. It was like this big in width and like that high in length. And I carried it around in my car. You know, you charge it up and it was like a portable um, air compressor. And also you can use it if you need it like to charge your phone, but it was humongous. It was very bulky. Now this one right here does everything for you without being so humongous. You can keep this in your glove compartment, in your actual car, and you can also purchase this from Amazon. So it does come with a pressure gauge right here. It does come with a charging battery, which is the C charger. I didn't use this. I used one that I already had that was already unraveled. So if you have one, that's great. But I used a C charger that I already had that was unraveled. It also does come with a little small pamphlet of, I do believe this is instructions, but I really find like this is definitely self-explanatory and plus you can read the reviews and you can go on Amazon and see what you can do with this. Now this is definitely not self-explanatory because this damn thing is definitely not in English. It's in a language that I don't know anything about. And it also comes with these things right here which is used to put the air pressure. All you have to do is basically screw this on 
Now, I have not got the opportunity to use it yet, thank God, because my tires are great. And then this is your little air pressure here that you would just stick it on. Now, you don't really need that. These other pieces, like I said, are just extras. Like if you have a basketball or any type of like, you know, floaties or whatever, you can use this as well. These are what these are for. But this is just a piece that you definitely will need. And just charge it. So I did charge it overnight. I pressed, uh, I long pressed the power button in the middle. So if you have, my tires take 34, my tires go up to like 33 i have low profile tires so i would set this temp this temperature gauge i would set this air compressor gauge to let's say I, it says 33 but i always put 34 in just a little bit extra as i was told by the actual um tire place it does also read your tire pressure you want to set your pressure to whatever your tire is so like i said mine's is 33 i'll put in like 33 34 and you want to wait through three seconds before pressing repressing the power button <laughs> So that is it giving the actual tire some air. Now, the one good thing about this, it also has an SOS button. So if you push that, you will have a light. So if you're in the evening, it's dark out, you'll also have this light, this SOS button. It will also alert anybody around you that you're in the vicinity of airing your tire out. But I thought this was really kind of nifty because who likes getting a flat tire? Now... You want to long press it to turn it all the way off. Now for one, and if the light is still on, you want to go back to pressing the SOS switch, which is at the top, and then that'll turn the light off. It'll go off. This is the SOS switch, which is blinking. That is just giving the SOS like emergency help. I'm in need of help. But if you long press it, it will turn all the way off. It's very, very noisy, but I mean, what do you expect? It's putting air into your tires. You know what's so crazy? I wonder how these little gadgets like really do the job like they do do the job but it's like how the hell is this even possible but this is a really cool gadget especially if you are out and about you are somewhere where you cannot get to air for your tire and you notice that it starts to seem like it's going flat these are really great to have one hand this is actually twenty nine dollars and 44 cents on amazon which is a great price like i like good prices so this is by eaf car very nifty it's great to have but you do need to make sure that you are charging it you like the price point of 29 dollars and 44 cents and it's very easy it's very compact compact so you can keep this with you wherever now i, I don't want to sit here and say i can't wait to use it because i really don't want to use it because who the hell want to be pumping up their tires let's just be for real like straight up like i said to turn on you want to long press it and then just to put your tire amount that you have like whatever you know air pressure your tire deserves you know you want to go to the plus and the negative mine's is already set it seems like it stays at that pressure and then you want to wait to three seconds and just tap it <laughs> So basically, once you see the zeros after you have put in your tire pressure, you can go ahead and just tap it. You don't need to long press the power to get it to start working to presume the air. You just want to tap it real quick and just allow the air to go in. And the other needles are for like basketballs, balls, inflatables, things like that. This does the job for all. One thing that I also do like a lot, which I purchased on my own from Amazon, was a battery charger for your car. So say your car is dead and you need to, you know pump up the battery real quick juice up the battery normally you would just have cables for that you would ask somebody like an onlooker hey can i can you can you give me a battery boost off your car well i purchased one myself like years ago because i don't like asking people to do shit for me and sometimes you might be in a situation where there's nobody around so the gadget that i purchased was about this size of course you did have to make sure that it was charged and i did have an issue a couple of times where i needed to boost my battery for my car because my battery was dead and all i had to do was just use my little gadget and it turned my car right on put my gadget back in the car and went about my business until i was able to get somewhere and buy a new battery now unfortunately i don't have that gadget anymore because please don't loan shit out to nobody like you know what not even to your own kids because they will not return your shit at all okay and i bought it from amazon too so get yourselves one of those and get yourself one of the tire pressure things because i feel like both of them are really really nifty to have especially if you're a woman we need these type of gadgets to keep us going but let's just get into this real talk because it's about to be long so if you have a
whatever real talk that you would like for me to embark on, talk about, review, whatever, just send me an email to aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Or you can also send it to Muffin Is My Lovers 2012 at gmail.com. Please put it in the subject line, Real Talk. So that way I know that it is a Real Talk video when I do search it up in my email. If you want to change the name of the people that you're speaking of, including yourself, then go ahead and do so. Let me know so that you've changed them already. And if you really don't care, girl, then that's fine too. So let's just get into this Real Talk, boo. Okay. I really wasn't going to be bothered with this email, but I felt like, you know what? If you spend the time to write this email to me, I'm going to address it. Regardless of what it is, I'm going to address it because had I been the one to write you, I would really appreciate you addressing it or at least responding back. Now, I really didn't need to respond to this because, bitch, I don't really give a fuck how you feel about me, what you think about me or any of that. But I felt the need to address this because I just really feel like some of you bitches, and I don't mean all of y'all, like y'all know who y'all are, but some of y'all really be getting out of character out of hand and it seems like y'all worry a little bit too much about things that really don't pertain to you you know what i'm saying like on, on some real shit i just be feeling like some of y'all really be addressing shit that don't pertain to you but if i don't like you it don't matter if i like you on or off camera meaning there are some bitches some hoes on youtube that i really don't care for and there's some in real life or like you know off of youtube that i really don't call, care for and of course my language might be a little bit negative right now towards these people but it's because i really don't like you but therefore if I don't like you, I just go about my business. That being said, okay, girl, then you know what? Since you wrote that to me, I'm going to address it. So she wrote this as a subject, like real talk, not a fan of yours anymore. Okay. Hello, April. Let me just start off by saying I used to be a fan of yours, but not anymore. I loved watching you come on YouTube. Like really didn't even get the word, the verbiage right. I loved watching you come on YouTube, all done up, hair snatched, make up snatched outfit snatched and more put together but i don't get that vibe from watching you anymore you seem like you don't care about your appearance along with you seem like you don't care about attracting the opposite sex ever since you and your ex-husband broke up now she wrote your husband but i put x in front of it because bitch that's not my husband I learned a lot from you over the years, like keeping myself together, how to apply a wig, but now maybe it's time you took some life advice for your own self. At a certain age, we must keep ourselves together to attract the opposite sex, to make ourselves happy and content. I understand that people change over time. Things change life changes but as a woman of your age i feel like we need to keep ourselves together looking our best at all times i'm only saying what others may want to say and also out of being concerned i hope this message does find you well and you are able to grasp and understand where i am coming from i've been through things in my life as well but was able to keep myself together i'm just concerned don't get me wrong, I love your content, but you're just but you just don't seem to be the same April I started following back in New York. And as a fellow diva, I felt the need to speak on it because I didn't see anyone else speaking on it. You're a beautiful woman. You truly are. But I feel like you need to pull yourself together and start looking like you're trying to attract the opposite sex. So this lady did not put her name at the, in this email anywhere. And the email address 
wasn't anything that would reflect on the name like mine's is you know like april or muffin it didn't reflect anything on a name so i don't know if you're trolling or not however let me just address this now first of all she said that i let myself go is that what she said i i don't appear as if i'm trying to attract the opposite sex and um i need to gather to put pull myself together and start looking like you're you're trying to attract the opposite sex first of all let's just put this out here bitch what makes you think that i'm trying to attract the opposite sex or i'm not trying to attract the opposite sex what makes you think that i want to attract the opposite sex like seriously like what makes you feel like my sex life my relationship life has anything to do with you or is anybody's business i could tell y'all all fucking day that i'm not in a relationship doesn't mean i'm not it's not really not y'all business i could have met somebody two months ago and still calling myself single because i really don't feel like i don't have to address my private life with anybody when i choose to is when i choose to you know what i'm saying so because you may think i'm single doesn't necessarily mean that i'm single just because i be on here saying i'm single does not mean that i'm single like to me being single is not married okay just because i might have a boyfriend that doesn't mean that i'm taken it doesn't mean that i'm non-single i'm still a person that's not married so or engaged so to me being engaged and being married shows that you are not single and i may say that wrong to some people but like what makes you feel like i have to divulge every fucking move that i make with anybody on youtube or anybody off of youtube like my personal life and my private life has none of anybody else's business and when i feel the need to address that or come on here and let you guys know like oh i found somebody then i will address that and until then i don't have the need to do that i don't care to do that okay now letting myself go what did she say my wig be snatched my outfits be snatched my makeup be snatched let's just address this bitch you don't even see my whole entire outfits when i'm on youtube you see this much you see this much so you really don't know what's on underneath this shirt like you you really don't know what i have on below my chest so outfits being snatched like if you call this being snatched from the breast up then girl go for it like you know what i'm saying like because that's what i do i come on here and i make sure that my shirt is nice and clean and look bright and tidy for the video and my bottoms i might not even have no bottoms on you might i just might be sitting here in my motherfucking underwear my granny drawers my bikinis my panties butt naked you really don't know so for you to say my outfits be snatched my outfits be snatched when i'm doing a tutorial or a haul on trying on some clothes that's the only time you really get to see my entire outfit other than that you see the breast up from the girls like straight up you don't really see too much so i don't understand what you say and my hair be snatched okay my hair be snatched because i'm doing a wig tutorial so when i do a wig tutorial it's always going to be snatched but i feel like this i'm 50 fucking years old i've been on this youtube this app for god knows how long 16 and a half 17 years and if i feel like i don't have to put on no makeup and come on here then i'm not putting on makeup and coming on here y'all could either accept me for who the fuck i am or don't accept me at all and move on on press the X and move on to another channel it don't make me no never mind so for anybody to feel like she said that she just saying what others may want to say let me tell you about others I don't really give a damn what others may feel or think about me like when i tell y'all i really don't care what people think about me i really don't but then there's a part of me that do care because i'm not going to be belligerent out in public or ignorant and disrespectful or dysfunctional out in public because i don't want anybody to see me in that particular light but as far as my hair and my clothes and my outfits and my wigs and my makeup if you don't like the fact that i don't wear makeup like that like or i don't have my hair done i just have it pulled back in a ponytail then that's your preference i don't feel like i need to dress up and overdressed just to be in the house every day like i'm not about to put on a wig all the time like some people fail to realize before wigs was invented people was wearing their own natural hair and yeah i did come on youtube i started out doing wig videos and it wasn't even intentionally i really wanted to do makeup but i realized i wasn't good at that and then i went viral for my half wigs on my prior channel and so that's what i continued on with okay but before we were wearing the wigs girl bitch i was wearing my own natural hair now over the years yeah my hair is thinned out i've lost a lot of my hair i've cut it etc etc but I I still don't want to wear a wig every day. I live in Arizona where it gets to be 120 degrees outside. What makes you think that I'm going to put on a wig, glue it down, hairspray it down, and then wear it outside and then pass the fuck out because it's too goddamn hot? I'm not about to put myself through all of that. And attracting the opposite sex, if a man can't look at me because I don't have on a wig and makeup, then he's got something wrong with him. I feel like beauty is beauty. And if you want to be your natural self, then be your natural self. I don't have to impress nobody if I don't want to. The person that I'm pressing every day is God, is Jesus. 
Jesus and myself. Bitch, I wake up every day to impress myself and God and Jesus and those in my family. And I don't even need to re-impress nobody because impressing somebody is just like being your natural self. And if you're not impressed by me being my natural self and be being outspoken April or real April, then girl, I don't know what to tell you. But for you to come and send me an email and tell me that I fell off or people are going through things in life. Yes, everybody going through something in life. But girl, don't compare your shit with mine because it will never be comparable. So just like she wrote, we're going to call her hater we're gonna we're gonna call her hater she wrote that everybody go through stuff or whatever she says i understand that people change over time things change life changes but as a woman of your age i feel like we need to keep ourselves together looking our best at all times i'm only saying what others may want to say and also are being concerned i hope this message finds you well and you are able to grasp and understand where i'm coming from i've been through things in my life as well but was able to keep myself together first of all what you've been through in your life hater is not probably what i've been through in life i don't know what you've been through but let's not compare what i've been through in life compared to what you've been through because i have been through a lot in my life okay and when i say a lot meaning i'm i lost my son okay i lost him like he like not where i can't find him bitch he is gone he has passed away and so from that i've been very humbled and i've learned to be acceptable and appreciate more in life versus being so vain and worry about clothes fashion and makeup so because i lost my son i was able to accept a lot of things in life that maybe others are not able to accept i've learned to embrace my natural beauty i've been learned to embrace those around me and I've learned to be a little bit more humble with my life so what you went through sweetheart is not the same thing that I went through a lot of people be too vain out here and worry about the shit that don't really need to be worried about like appearance like some people can't afford wigs some people can't afford makeup some people can't afford like the high-end clothing or whatever so they work with what they got okay now you've been through some shit yeah bitch so have I and many others that are watching this so let's not compare our what we've been through compared to what I've been through because I've not only lost a child but then like a year after losing a child my husband my ex-husband went about his merry way and never came back so i lost the love of my life i lost my son amongst that then my other son went to jail i mean his relationship ain't even that great i had to help my daughter get her life together amongst other things so what i've been through has all been a family issue and it's very detrimental and tragic and traumatizing to a lot of people not saying that i let myself cold because i damn sure didn't but yeah i may have gained a few pounds 25 pounds 50 pounds who even cares but bitch i wake up every day living and breathing and thanking god that i woke up above the goddamn dirt so all of that super nonsense is not a concern to me as long as i'm able to meet my mark in life which is pay my bills and care for my family then i'm happy and i don't really give a fuck about what any of y'all hoes or bitches might feel about me and that's on period poop okay so with that being said let's just leave it at listen how you may feel about me is fine i really don't care how i feel about me is more valid to me i care about what i feel about me and i care about what my family feels about me and then there are some family members who i could care less what they feel about me and about attracting the opposite sex like i said how do you know i haven't already attracted the opposite sex and on top of that bitch what makes you think that i want to even attract the opposite sex i never said that i wanted to attract the opposite sex to you guys i never said i wanted a relationship with the opposite sex to you guys i never said any of that so what my sexual preferences is not any of your business i might attract the same sex you don't know Know that but what i don't share on here is what i don't share it's a personal boundaries boundaries okay some of y'all don't really have no boundaries and i feel like just because y'all feel like i'll be on here is that i'm supposed to divulge all of my personal and private life with y'all but i really don't have to you know yeah i put up my blogs and i put out what i want y'all to see and what i want y'all to know some people put out a little bit too much and sometimes i might have done that in the past too but some things are sacred to me and some things i just feel like it's just best kept to myself now when i feel the need to let y'all know about a relationship that i'm in that i'm definitely going to let y'all know when i feel like it's right but until then sometimes we got to get to know the person that we mess them with before we even bring them out because I'm, I'm sorry but i'm not about to be out here looking stupid for nobody whether i've been with this person two months or three months i really don't feel like that's enough time to get to know a person so yeah i'm gonna still say i'm single okay i could have been with this person a year Still, I'm going to say myself single because you ain't put no ring on it. You know what I'm saying? You didn't put no ring on it. And I haven't introduced you to my internet family. Just because I don't introduce somebody, excuse me, to my internet family right away doesn't mean that I don't have somebody. Okay? Now, moving right the fuck along. Like she addressed it, not a fan of mine anymore. Girl, bye. I'm not Beyonce. I don't need fans. Okay? I just need family. And I consider everybody on here my family. Now, we're going we gonna to continue on uh, to the next. Okay? Now, this young lady... <laughs> She titled this Real Talk, she being nasty. Let me put on my little Real Talk voice. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when I change the voices. All right. Hey, April, I hope your day is going well. My name is Eve and I'm reaching out to you because I have a so-called friend. She's more or less a mutual friend. We both work at the same spot, but I also kind of sort of knew her before working working here. Uh, what I also kind of sort of knew her before working here. I think that's what she wanted to say. Through another mutual friend, we share a comment. So anyway, you can call her Catherine, but this girl comes to work always bragging about the men that be after her, which April, I would not be bragging about these so-called street hood ninjas with the gold teeth and sagging or tight pants. Anyway, Catherine came to work and was speaking to me about how she got herpes from one of the men and have been living with this for a few months now. However, she still is sleeping with other men. And I did ask her, how does she go about telling these other men that she has herpes? Since she has been telling me her business, I decided to ask questions. April, she told me she doesn't tell them that she's got herpes. It's not their business. Now, listen, I'm not anyone's keeper. I don't tell anyone what to do or when to do it, but I'm really feeling some kind of way of her lack of realness with other people. Now, what made me write this to you is because she came in with some bumps on her lips. When I asked her, was she okay? What's good? She looked at me and laughed it off and said, girl, this is just a baddie scar. April, what the hell is a baddie scar? Looks like it's the nasty scar to me. Like I said, I'm not trying to judge anyone, but honestly, after seeing her lips like that, I really tried to stay in my lane, stay my distance from her. Have you ever had to experience anything like this? What would you tell her if that was your so-called friend? Eve. So first of all, I don't even really know what to say about this, okay? Because what I have noticed over the past few months now is a lot of videos be popping up on my YouTube page about all these cases of STDs, HIV, and whatever have you. And more or less, a lot of times I've seen these videos and it's coming from like Texas. Now, I don't really know where this young lady is at because she didn't say that she was in Texas, Florida, New York, Alaska, Portland, Ohio, wherever. She did not say where she was from, but she did say that the young lady was sort of kind of her friend from another friend and that they worked together, but she knew her before they worked together. And now the girl be at work bragging about how all the men be with would be wanting her but Eve says she wouldn't even be bragging about none of those men wanting her because they ain't they ain't nothing but hood boogers okay basically she said ninjas but i just said hood boogers though she did say those sagging and tight jean wearing gold teeth okay now how would i handle this it's like so the girl is still sleeping with others even though she's known for the herpes or she knows she has the herpes and what would i do if i had a friend like this I know I wouldn't drink behind that bitch. I know that. I wouldn't borrow none of her clothes. Okay. Um, I just wouldn't drink behind her. I probably wouldn't even come to your house and eat none of your food because I would just feel some type of way. I don't know. That might be a little bit of a stretch, but if that was my so-called friend, like I don't really know if they're friends like that, like that because they're mutual friends. So I don't really know what people mean by mutual friends because everybody has their own meaning or something. You know what I'm saying? So they do work together and they see one another every day. She said she tried to keep her distance from the young lady because she had the bumps on her lips. And what is a bad? scar like you're not a baddie if you got herpes on your lips like you know what everybody like i just said everybody has their own version and meaning of a word like some people feel like baddies or baddies like you know i like to watch zeus and i think like the baddie show with natalie nunn is hilarious now would i consider those girls to be a baddie hell fucking no no i don't consider none of those females to be a baddie now um michelle obama I consider her to be all baddie, okay? As much as I don't really care for Oprah Winfrey, I might I might even consider her to be a baddie. You know what I mean? But um, Janet Jackson, I consider her to be a baddie, but not, not the girls from Zeus, like, because their reputation of a baddie is just like giving me 304 vibes. Like, it's just definitely giving hoish vibes. But I like to watch the show because I like the content. I think I like drama, but as long as it ain't got shit to do with me, bitch, I like drama, but 
a baddie scar? I don't I don't really know what a baddie. Okay, is this a baddie scar on my chest? Because I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't even consider myself to be a baddie. Like, I think like real women, like real conservative, classy women, we don't really consider ourselves to be baddies. We don't even think of, we don't even think in that realm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. Um, so I don't even want to classify myself with being a baddie. I'm just a woman. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a woman out here that's trying to make it by. And, you know, I, I have class. When I go outside, I'm very demure, demure. I'm very classy. I'm very mindful. And I really don't want to try to attract like the wrong type of people. That's just me. Now, if I need to get out of character, I definitely can do so. But I also know how to bring myself back into character. So I don't know if that's what you want to be considered a baddie. I don't wear like the baddie wigs. I don't wear the baddie clothing. So I don't really know. But if I had a friend or a so-called, um, associate that was like her i definitely would say something like i don't really know if eve is saying anything she might be just laughing it off and going about her business which is fine because sometimes you just have to not indulge with people you just have to just mind your business and go about it okay but now this might be a little stretch but i might want to i might want to report her ass to the department of health for going around and sleeping with people knowingly that she's got herpes and knowingly that she's giving it out because in reality, you really don't know if that shit is going to come back to you. When I say come back to you, like she might be sleeping with somebody that was in your family or somebody might be sleeping with the same person that she's sleeping with that might be in your family and then they contract it or so forth and so forth. You never know what can come back to you or into your family. So I feel like if you are knowingly doing this on purpose, then you need to be reported because it's 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 a crime to give somebody a sexually transmitted disease on purpose. And it sucks and it's sad because I've been seeing so much, like I've been saying, I've been seeing a lot of people on YouTube reporting all of these sexually transmitted diseases. Like I just seen this thing like a couple of weeks ago. Um, I can't remember everything, but I do know that the guy was saying more or less like people are getting three for ones. And I'm like, what the fuck is a three for one? So like they're sleeping with you and they're giving you three diseases at one time. Like what the hell? Like seriously, what the hell is going on with, with society? Like, like straight up. Like, so <clears throat> People are sleeping with people that they don't know and they're getting all of these diseases. Like y'all don't want to wear condoms when sleeping with people that you don't know. Let, let me just say this, what you do in your private life and what I do in my private life is it's your business because the word is private. But I just find it so cringy that people will sleep with just about anybody and not even care or just be sleeping with anybody and not in a relationship. Like I've never been the type, I've never had a one night stand. Um, and I can't say unfortunately because I just I can't say unfortunately because it's fortunate for me But I've never had a one-night stand like and I don't really know what one-night stands come from sometimes I guess people are like intoxicated and they end up having one-night stands I mean and then there are just some people that just have them like I've never been that type of person to Have a one-night stand with somebody out of the influence of alcohol or just the influence because I ain't got nothing better to do so I don't really know and like I don't really know all about what's going on in like these different states of all these different diseases because listen i'm not about to give up the punani to nobody unless we in a long-term relationship i just i don't really see myself doing stuff like that um you could call me a prude or whatever but i just i just don't do stuff like that i've never done stuff like that you know what i mean um i have children yes and i was in relationships with the people that i you know have children with but even if you do have a one night stand, are you that intoxicated that you don't want to put on a condom? Like, I don't, I don't really know. Like I would never want to catch something from somebody that I couldn't get rid of. Like herpes, you just can't get rid of. And like, what is another sexually transmitted disease that you can't get rid of? I think like, I don't, I don't know. Is syphilis one of them? I don't, I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't go around trying to do surveys on sexually transmitted diseases or any of that stuff. I just feel like, you know, society has changed a lot over the years, you know, for me growing up, you know, like when I was a kid, like the AIDS epidemic was the outbreak, you know, and I was a kid. So I've never experienced anybody in my family dying over AIDS or anything like that. Not saying that they have it or don't have it. Cause I don't, I don't really know with herpes. You just can't get rid of that, which is unfortunate for those who get it. Now, I don't know how frequently they get it, but if you are knowingly carrying any type of disease, whether it be a sexually transmitted disease or chicken pox or uh, COVID or anything, why would you want to give it to anybody else? That's just like really cruel.
like straight up that's really cruel that is definitely not demure that's definitely not mindful but it's cruel it's cruel like why would you do that that's like an, an, a weapon your friend or your so-called friend at work eve i would really say don't don't hang around her because you know the old saying and i've said this several times in videos birds of a feather flock together i don't know about y'all but i really try to stay away from people that just have like this negative essence about them you know what i'm saying like i really try to keep away from people that try that have like a negative essence about them and some people may feel like oh i'm judging people but no it's not because i'm judging you it's because i don't have time for the nonsense and i don't want to be a part of any of that and i don't want to be known for being a part of that or anyone speculating that i'm a part of that type of lifestyle but really if i had a friend that was doing that and she was knowingly sleeping with men and that she had herpes and she knew she had herpes girl she she and i really wouldn't be friends for too long and I mean this in the most positive way. She and I would not be friends for too long, only because you know only giving people stuff that you knowingly have, which could be detrimental to their life. And for you to be spreading that is like, it's very, very wicked. And why would you want to do that? Because I'm pretty sure when you found out that you got herpes, it broke your heart. You cannot tell me that somebody just finding out that they got herpes is a cool thing to have. And they was okay with that. My lips are so fucking dry guys. Hold on. Had to put on some Carmax, you guys. My lips was dry and I kept drinking water. But if that was my friend, like, I don't really think that she and I would be friends for too long. Just for the simple fact is like you're knowingly given and you're spreading like a disease that could really hit the community like tragically. So I don't really feel like she and I would be friends for too long. Um, and I don't like to be a snitch because it's not really snitching, but I'm trying to look out for the betterment of other human beings that are living. And I just really don't feel like it's cool. Like, let's say you didn't know that you had something, then okay, and you accidentally pass it on to someone. That's understandable. But knowingly that you have something and she's saying that these men, it's not their business to know, it's definitely their business to know. Because what if um, you have a flare up? What are you gonna tell them? Oh, this is just pimples on my pussy? This is just pimples on my lip like girl no it's not cool and there should be somebody that you can actually speak with um i'm not saying go to your human resource department but maybe maybe your own doctor you can speak with or whoever but like knowingly giving somebody something and spreading is disgusting and like that person definitely needs to be stopped i'm not sure if she's doing this knowingly because she's angry or just maybe she's ashamed but either way if you knowingly doing it and you're definitely saying well it's not their business to know then maybe you need to be dealt with in a manner that is acceptable to all of us i'm not saying let's put her on blast and hang her picture up in stores and on the internet but it's really not cool it's definitely not acceptable to be spreading any type of disease that you have virus to anyone knowingly having it you purposely are doing it on purpose so i don't feel like it's cool so there's definitely should be somebody you could talk to but it's sad it's really definitely a thing now and I, i'm getting really tired of seeing it on my homepage on youtube or just popping up and when when i say i'm tired of seeing it it's not like oh i'm tired of seeing it. it's just like there's no awareness like you people are just sleeping around with just anybody with no condom on like i'm not wanting to call anybody disgusting and i'm I'm definitely not wanting to judge anyone but this is how aids start okay or any type of disease like there are children in this world like nobody wants to be pregnant and be pregnant with any type of disease that they may pass along to their children so yeah i'm tired of seeing it and i feel like you know what i'm saying like this is something that definitely needs to be you know dealt with like I'm glad that I don't know too many people that walk around carrying disease and knowingly purposely giving it to someone. Like, I'm glad that I don't know that type of person. But if you do, like there's, there really needs to be some type of hotline that you can call anonymously and report that person. I'm not sure if there is, there just may. And if there is Eve, then I would definitely call and report her just because she's purposely giving it out because you don't know, she may sleep with somebody in your family that you don't know was sleeping with her or she don't know is in your family and pass it along. So I feel like these type of people that are doing things purposely really do need to be dealt with in the, the legal manner. And I do know that passing along sexually transmitted diseases in some states, I'm not really sure if all you can be committed as it being a crime. So that's what I would do. Hopefully there's a hotline that you can call. If not, call your department of health and let them know that this is going on. And you know, unfortunately she's probably gonna know if they come to your job where it came from. But then again, you never know. There might be other people that do know of her catching the herpes. I'm pretty sure that when she first got the herpes or was aware that she got herpes or was diagnosed with the herpes, I'm pretty sure that she was really, really distraught by that. Because if you give me some type of disease, girl, I'm probably gonna wanna unalive you, which is unfortunate to say, but if you willingly, knowingly, purposely 
honestly give me some type of disease i'm probably going to want to unalive you because you did it to unalive me okay yes so i would definitely see if i could call the department of health and just report that like just let them know like listen i work with this girl she's knowingly purposely giving out herpes or sleeping with men knowing that she has herpes and she feels like it's not their business some people might be calling me a snitch right now but bitch call me what the fuck ever you want to call me but i'm pretty sure you don't want to catch nothing from anybody else knowingly and purposely and that's just one period now i was going to read the other email that i got because i did say three um, this one is about domestic violence unfortunately and this one was addressed to me as such hello miss april hello divas my name is charlie and i live in florida with my best friend we're actually roommates and she and i met in college i'm a 29 year old hispanic female and she is 28 years old she is a black woman i thought i would just give you a little history of who we are we have been friends for over 10 years now and i love my best friend eileen so much she's my family i would do anything for her because she's my family i wanted to reach out to you because eileen has been going through something in her love relationship she's been with a guy named ryan for a little over two years he's a white guy at first i thought ryan was a great guy you know he would come over, bring groceries, bring takeout for not just her, but both of us. Help us with anything around the house we may need instead of us relying on maintenance. This was in the beginning of their relationship. It's been over two years and he is not the same person I met. He has cheated on her and it wasn't hearsay like people gossiping to us about him cheating. It was caught. She and I caught him out once at this club. And yeah, he was there all hugged up all over some female. When Eileen and I approached him at the club, the woman he was with starting getting irate with us and getting in Eileen's face. Of course, I had to step in because Eileen is not a fighter, but like I said, she's my family. I ain't about to allow no one to fuck with my friend. We got into a fight with the girl, got kicked out of the club, and she stopped messing with Ryan for a few months. But of course, he weaseled his way back into her life. Things was good for a while. I could tell he was annoyed with me. I could tell Ryan was annoyed with me after a while due to me sticking up for her, but I don't give a fuck about his feelings. Now, here we are over two years later, and he's still with that, and she's still with that loser. He constantly comes over, always trying to start an argument with her. He lives with his mama and daddy, so Eileen doesn't go over there so much unless his parents go away for the weekend. Well, a few weeks back, she was over his house for the weekend, and when she came back home, she had bruises on her and tried to tell me that she got drunk and fell down some of the steps at his parents' house. Miss April, I don't believe a word of it because I have had to break them up from physically fighting one another. Like, she will fight him back, but why have to do all of that? That is not what is supposed to happen in a relationship i have been trying to tell her for a while now to leave him alone get with someone else he's no good he's a loser etc but she is not taking my advice he is violent towards her always trying to buy he is violent towards her always trying to get money off her putting hands on her cheating and whatever else you can think of that is negative i'm so over him i'm ready to have my brother come through and whip his skinny ass i would never allow any man to put their hands on me and i don't understand why she's allowing this she's a beautiful girl and deserves so much more and better in life what would you do if a man kept putting their hands on you charlie want to know what i would do if i had a man put my hand put their hands on me i would whip his fucking ass okay oh yeah we're gonna go blow for blow i'm not saying i'm not promoting violence but let a man in a relationship with me put their hands on me dude you're gonna be leaving out of this thing to lump the fuck up trust and believe i have never been one there to sit back and allow anybody to put their hands on me now mind you um I was in a relationship like that a long time ago, a very, very long time ago, with my son Wuzzle's father. He tried to put hands on me, and he did, and girl, when I tell you his ass was lumped the fuck up, his ass was lumped the fuck up too, because we don't play those games over here, but just because I'm going to fight you back doesn't mean I need to be in a relationship with you, because don't nobody want to be sitting here fighting nobody the fuck back. Fortunate for your friend, what is her name? Eileen, that she got to go through this, but you know what? Sometimes you can tell a person to you blue in the face not to be with somebody. They're not going to take your advice until it's too late, or they just plain tired of it. And you know what? If that was my friend, yeah, I would stick up for her. And yeah, I would say something. But the next time that you see him putting hands on her or um, instigating an argument with her just to put hands on her, girl, call the popo. Like, straight up, don't allow your friend to go through that shit. Like, yeah, y'all both could probably fight him off, but why even try to do that? And you don't really know what a person is capable of doing. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of their race or whatever, you don't know what a person is capable of doing. So I definitely will be calling the police on this loser. Now, mind you, I'm a black woman. And if I don't give a damn what race you are, you're not about to put no hands on me. Okay? Because, yeah. Yeah, you about to get these paws put the back the fuck on you but after i put these paws on your ass you're gonna be leaving out with your paws cut behind your goddamn back escorted to the nearest
there's police stations because I don't play those games. You know what? There's too many women out here that lose their lives, lose their families, lose their children over domestic violence. And it doesn't matter if it's a man putting their hands on a woman or a woman putting their man, hands on a man or a man or man or woman on woman. Keep your motherfucking hands to your goddamn self because they were not intended to put on nobody else like straight up. These hands are used for fixing things and using them day to day, not for slapping a bitch or slapping a man or slapping a hoe. Now, mind you, I will slap a bitch and I will slap a man if need be, but I'm not promoting violence. Now, if this was my friend, I would definitely get her out of the situation. I would definitely report his ass. Now, a lot of people be like, oh, you're a cop caller. I'm definitely not. But when you are harming somebody else and somebody close to me, or even if I see you in the street and it was a man putting his hands on you, I'm calling the police. You know, I don't know what promoted this fight or escalated to this, but therefore I'm still going to be calling the police on you because nobody deserves to be putting hands on anybody point blank period okay this is the one thing but they've been friends for over 10 years and it's like she's her family to her you know charlie if that was my friend and i felt like she was like family to me just stick by her side and continually continue continue to talk to her and hopefully get her away from the situation but i definitely would be calling the police on him because if you're going to come into my dwelling into where i live into where i reside and start your shenanigans and start your bullshit arguments or what have you then you have to leave you cannot be here so the next thing i would do the next step is I wouldn't allow him to come over anymore. I wouldn't allow it. The next time he comes over to your home and he starts his shenanigans with being irate, being disrespectful to either you or her or to the both of you, then I would be calling the police on him because that's your home. You don't need any type of negative energy in your home. You don't need any type of chaos in your home. Neither you nor your friend need any type of chaos. Straight up. Like I cannot stand to see men putting their hands on women because I just really feel like that's a punk ass move. Like, are you about to go out there and fight a dude like that? You about to fight a real man? like that like anybody they put their hand like when a man is with a woman and they put their hands on a woman like you got a problem now you putting your hands on her and you leave invisible marks dude no you know you dead ass wrong and you yourself need your ass to be kicked for that but charlie ready to call her brother and have him come over listen charlie that's one thing that you don't want to do is involve other people in the nonsense because you really don't know what it can lead to you may you may have your brother go to jail for life or years because he might do something to this guy ryan that really wasn't needed you have to let the law handle shit like back in the day i would definitely be like yeah i'm about to call somebody over here for your raggedy ass like for real that would be me back in the days or i'm about to handle you that would be me back in the days like straight up but I've grown, I've matured, and I've realized that some people are really, really, really not worth your time and your energy. And so with that being said, I just allow the law to take control of them and handle the situation. There are so many people out here in this world who definitely need to be behind bars because of their actions. I'm not saying like those who defending themselves, but for those who are starting shit or doing shit purposely, you definitely need to be dealt with. And this right here is a sad case of somebody needing to be dealt with. Let's put you in a room with some real men and see how you get out of the situation. Let's put yourself in a room with some real men and see if you give them that same fucking energy. Like straight up, those are the men that really probably were bullied during their live really ain't got shit going for themselves like ryan seems like a bum ass i, I wanted to say bum ass nigga but he a bum ass white boy because he lived with his parents and he and he come over and he want to put hands on eileen now i'm not calling you a bum ass ninja because you live with your parents but i'm calling you a bum ass ninja because you live with your parents and then you come over to somebody else's house or when your parents ain't around and you you know what i'm saying you have that type of energy where you feel like it's okay to put your hands on somebody let me tell you something ryan gonna get his day he gonna be dealt with one day he is gonna have his day in court one day and hopefully it ain't with Eileen. You know what I'm saying? I fear for women that, that be in relationships that are violent because at the end of the day, you really don't know what the outcome may be. This woman could get so tired of being in a relationship with the person that's abusing them to where they have really, really like became somebody else to where they hurt this person who has been abusing them. And then they end up in jail because of this person that's been abusing them for a long term. Like, I just really feel for women like that because like i said i too have been in a situation like that and it wasn't just with my son wuzzle's father but um when i moved to um, upstate new york i moved upstate new york in 
I think my son, my oldest son, I only had one kid at the time and I moved upstate New York with this dude named Jerome. We moved from Queens to, to um, upstate New York and I moved with him and it was his family that we moved in with. Now I ended up finding a place right across the street from them, but Jerome was like a very like manipulative person and he was a drunk and he um, just, he abused me to the point where he had his sister come across the street and she tried to abuse me. I had to fight her off of me. I ended up going with children and family services because they called children and family services on me and reported me for not having any type of furniture in my home, which I did have furniture. I had a bed and I had a couple of chairs and I actually gained this furniture from the landlord that I rented from. Now, mind you, when I moved there, I didn't have anything. It was just me and my son. We did not have anything. I worked at a local Toys R Us and and I just was making ends meet. This was upstate in Utica. Now, I didn't want to be with him anymore. And that was my problem of moving across the street. And in the beginning, I really felt like his family was all for me. They was on my side. His sister-in-law was who she was. She wasn't her blood sister, but his brother was the one that was, you know, married to Gigi and she had her own family and she was really really loving and you know just like really there for me in the beginning and then she just like switched up on me and she's the one who came across the street and talked shit tried to get in my face she did end up calling like I said child protection services on me and tried to report me for not having anything when child protection services did come over they did see that I had a bed and I did have toys and like a like couple chairs and a couple of dishes for me and my son now mind you I got these things from the landlord the landlord came over one day when I was not there I was at work and she was just there to collect the rent and just to see how I was doing she did walk into the apartment with her keys and did see that I had nothing but she also did see that we were living there like she did see the toys and she did see the blanket that was on the floor that me and my son were sleeping on and when I came back later on that day from work there was a bed put together there were a couple more toys and two chairs left for me and a note and she left all of this stuff for me do you know how I felt from just seeing the things that was left for me by my landlord. I didn't know this white lady from a hole in the wall. I just knew that she was my landlord and that she was very giving and that she cared. You know what I'm saying? She left me a bed. She left my son some toys. She left us a couple of chairs. She left us a little bit more dishes. And she left, like I said, my son some toys. And she left me a note and a little TV. And I was so happy with what was left. Like that felt like it was everything for me. And I stayed there for probably like a couple of months after she gave me the stuff. But they kept, you know, like I said, they lived across the street. <clears throat> And they just kept harassing me and harassing me. And even though the cops were called on them, they still just kept harassing me and harassing me. Finally, I guess Gigi decided she was going to call CPS on me because I wasn't allowing her to physically attack me. <clears throat> when social services came, CPS came to my home, I did tell them what was going on and that I wasn't from the area and I had no family. So with that being said, they brought me to, they asked me did I want to go to the domestic violence shelter and they would relocate me. And I agreed. I did agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Because I had been going through so much with this family and I lived in that domestic violence shelter for probably like, I want to say three or four months. And I was, I was okay there. I was, it was a huge house. It was huge. It was like a mansion, but it was so huge. It might, it was huge. It was just really, really big. And it was other families living there. Like, you know, we all had our own rooms and stuff. And I made friends with other women that were there and their children. And it was just so engaging and so loving. And then, you know, I transferred somewhere else out of that county, out of that state, a part of New York. But it was very helpful to me. And what, I, what I'm trying to get you to understand, um, um, Charlie, is people go through shit in life and you know, we cannot wait till it's too late. Sometimes we need to call the proper authorities to help those that we love. And it's unfortunate that I was called by those that dislike me, but in the end, it really did help me become a stronger person and a person that was more independent. But what I really am grateful for is the fact that someone that I didn't even know that I just was paying rent to was there for me. And I didn't even know it. Like this was so remarkable of this landlord to do for me like I nobody has ever done anything like that for me in my life like to go to work with nothing and to come home with a bed and a folding chairs and a folding like a card table and some extra toys for my son and like you know other little utensils and things it was a blessing from God like seriously it was a blessing for God and I'm very thankful for that you know and God like he watches over all of us so with that being said I um Charlie I want to call her Eileen but her friend is Eileen with that being said Charlie I really feel like 
you need to look out for your friend and call the proper authorities don't wait until it's too late and I, that's for anyone if you are you know someone or if you are in any type of relationship that's negative and it's abusive call like the YMCA or the YWCA they're they're huge advocates for domestic violence you know what I'm saying call your local resources because they're deaf but YWCA is a huge advocate for domestic violence and they definitely can help you regardless of what state you're in they can definitely help you and I'm just gonna put that out there but don't wait till it's too late call like the property authorities but you know I'm gonna go because I've, I've wasted and not wasted because I ain't waste nobody's fucking time but I'm gonna go because I've taken enough of you guys time and I'm hungry girl I'm gonna make me a little sandwich and then I'm gonna see y'all in the next one go ahead and leave your comments down below for all three emails but i love y'all and i'll see y'all in the next one